What is up YouTube? It's good to be back in another video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the last one. Uh, just kind of a, a vlog that I did over the over the weekend, uh, week of Thanksgiving and whatnot, and um, scheduled it for this week. So uh, there's a little gap between concerts there. But anyways, so excited to uh, be making this video because uh, we have another one in this channel, right? Yeah. I agree so too. Thank you for the channel. Uh, what we're gonna do is just dive into a little bit of a uh, little bit of content as far as continuing what we're gonna be doing with the with the Z pretty much. It's, and today we're gonna actually be doing some some maintenance and stuff like that, checking some things because it's been uh, running great, but it's startups, some startups, some issues with startups and stuff like that have been happening. So I'm definitely gonna dive into to a little bit of maintenance today, just checking some things. I'm sorry in advance uh, if you can hear humming. I literally have a microphone coming in very shortly. A few things that you may have noticed is the camera quality or the video quality uh, that you are looking at right now is drastically different or better, hopefully. This is the G7X Mark III and I'm so excited to be using it because I have the Mark II and then I went to the N50 and now I'm back with G7X and um, yeah, it's, it's awesome camera, it's working fine. Uh, like I said, I just need a microphone to pretty much Set the setup of the camera, and it's also not to be, you know, behind in front of some blue walls. I will say that. Uh, I just gotta point that out once more. <laughs> it's raining like crazy, so I might have to postpone uh, everything that I had planned in this vlog, <laughs> which is okay. I'll get to it. The car's still on the ramps, so um, that's I guess one of the pluses. It's already done. So as I'm talking to y'all right now, the microphone is coming. So I'm going to go grab that. Before I put it on, I realized something which is actually pretty cool. Uh, if I had read the description of it, I would have been able to tell you the first time. But <laughs> as far as this guy goes with the microphones, it's okay. Switch between the front and the rear or you can have both mics uh, working at the same time. I'm probably gonna have um, both of them moving at the same time just to, to don't have to keep switching back and forth as I'm uh, vlogging and stuff. All right, I think this is the setup. Put the mic on, um, I tested it to make sure that it's picking up and it is, so looks like we got our, our vlogging set up again. Camera, microphone. Now all we gotta do is make the content. So far it looks like we have everything that will be needed. So we have um, some pans here for oil, uh, coolant. Then we have um, oil filter. And then this guy I am really excited to use. If I can get face of it. Uh, basically uh, coolant. Cooling kit, filling kit, or whatever, also helps like with bleeding and stuff. Just does everything naturally. That board is right here. These rhino ramps. So I'm gonna grab, uh, grab these, put the car on there, have it at an angle to where it's lifted. Then have the the cooling kit. Then have the cooling kit on top to help also with bleeding. And uh, hopefully the angle won't be too weird where it's like like maybe leaning or something, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that would be the case, but um, just to help whatever may be in the system as far as air to to, um, to get yeeted out because we're not trying to have uh, cooling temps and stuff um, start rising or because of air pockets. So I have that, I have the ramps, I have the, the filter and the, the pans. So cool it and get oil uh, and distilled water. I'm gonna get some distilled water. Um, those are the three things I have to do. Well, you can tell through the camera, but it barely clears. And there's, there's enough room in there for it to not scrape or... Wow. <laughs> That's barely on there, but it'll work. We should be going straight up. There's no reason for this to mess up. <laughs> Ideally.
bars on the ramps. I did that pretty, pretty well. No incidents, it didn't yeet off the ramps. So, last thing I need to do is go get the oil, and go get the, uh, the coolant and distilled water, and um, everything else will be pretty much, pretty much ready to go. But man, just coming here, I really need to replace this hose. It's pretty soaked and gunk, and I'm pretty sure it's um, leaking some fluid, power fluid. And then I already changed the O2 sensor, but I might do the other one as well. I just I would just feel better about that. I need to change this out uh, with a, or change it out or somehow repair it because it's real jank. Look at that, just a giant, just a giant hole staring back at me uh gotta get that fixed and yeah i just gotta make make her restore her i mean it's just this is ridiculous okay so it's not the next day but the the next uh, the day after that so the weather's clear enough to do some things take maintenance stuff today so i'm gonna get that done um uh, gotta run to the store really quick gotta get the oil gotta, gotta get the coolant um already have the oil filter and then after that just gonna go ahead and get the stuff done okay so i'm back from the store got everything that i need and so we're gonna just start this process let me get it over it's a little it's a little chilly out here so i will not take my time <laughs> so uh let's just get set up Took some convincing, but we have the oil drain plug. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess, which is highly. Oh, look at that. All right, so step one done. Nothing crazy, nothing serious. And then while I'm at it, I'm just gonna stay under here and kinda check out my oil lines here. Um, I'm running a, a uh, twin turbo, twin turbo radiator. So um, I had to get a external external um, oil cooler right here. And so I'm just checking the lines just to make sure that they're tight, nothing's dripping. And so far it's pretty dry. Last time I checked it, it was like dr uh, dripping like crazy. So I had to tighten both these clamps up. So it looks good. Uh, next, I got my oil filter right there. Pretty simple and easy to change, like pretty much almost any car. Okay, um, very simple process so far. Oil's done draining, new filter is on. Um, now, just got to add the new oil. But what I'm really, what I'm most excited about is using the spill proof um, coolant filler or coolant kit. So, it's this guy right here. I've seen it used, like, um, I've seen it used the mechanic shops on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, what I'm most excited about is the, its ability to to burp the system or let air uh, flow out while filling it. You literally just let it sit and do its thing. You, you, you get the setup going, uh, the applicable, um, uh, you use the applicable size cooling cap and then the proper adapter and whatnot. You fill up the, the reservoir or the you fill up the, the the gallon or the tank right here and then as it's burping or releasing air uh it's being replaced with uh coolant so it just feel it just burps itself and of course my car is at an angle which is uh cars at an angle upward which allows even more uh air to travel upward um so i believe like with between that and this i shouldn't really have any air in the system um or any kind of weird temp fluctuations like i've been having which i believe which was due to 
lack of um, maybe there's probably a volume issue there I did probably have the proper volume but I believe there was also um, air in the system um, I'm obviously no professional but it's just my my take on it so I'm gonna just try um, do all that and maybe take it out for a drive a long drive one day one of these days just to see what happens um, of course with it being pretty much winter uh, in Texas not really winter but um, it's not as hot as it could be in the summer so it's kind of like will I be able to get the proper scenario um, you know the, the proper worst case scenario uh, on a hot day I don't know we'll see and uh, we're gonna just continue this vlog I'm gonna add in um, this oil right now and then get this bad boy set up so let's go okay I have no I have no funnel so let's see if I can get this without one uh, we'll see Got it right on the spot. So four and a, so four and a half quarts is usually good for the Z's. Um, because I have an external uh, cooler, oil cooler, I kind of go get put an extra half of quarts in there uh, just to be safe. That's that's what I do. Or that's how I feel I should do. It. So um, I'm gonna add that remaining half in here. Yeah, that remaining half in here to um, finish up here. Okay, this one is significant, significantly smaller than the ones I've seen. <laughs> Maybe I didn't pay attention, but uh, slightly bigger than this, but I, it should be fine. Okay, I kind of got to figure it out. Um, I was a little worried because neither of these little things, adapters, if you want to call them, I don't really know. Um, not in one of these these caps were, were working, but um, it's kind of find out it's this one. Just needs a little convincing, <laughs> but uh, it fits on there. And then what's awesome is the way they have it set up. You, what you would do is once you find this, I guess, or either one first. I, I would just say I found this one first. I found this one first, so I would just kind of, you would sit um, this guy in there like so, has the rubber washer, and then sits in there, and you would put this guy on top like so, screw it down. So I was just trying to make sure which of these two was the best route. I mean, I don't necessarily think it matters, because they both work well. Bruh. Bruh. How not to how not to do a pull up bro. Okay, so behind me, I've already got the car running. Um, what I initially did was add coolant uh, to the radiator. Uh, just fill it up, fill it up all the way. Added the, the adapters. Added these guys. And then, of course, put this on last. Added some coolant in there. The very last step is adding the coolant. They say not to add too much, maybe about right here. I put it about right here just to be safe because you don't want it to overflow because it definitely can. And um, so right now, uh, oil's been changed, coolant's uh, being added and uh, burped. Uh, the next step is really assessing this oil and the coolant. I'm really worried about it, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get some help, some insight, and do some research. Uh, my camera's about to die, so uh, there may be a part two to this, or I might just wait for it to charge, and then continue from the same vlog. But yeah, so far, uh, everything looks good. My lifter tick is not really there anymore, which sounds great. But... 
yeah, this is really nice. I love this system. So, um, after draining the coolant, this is what, what I have. Um, not very ideal look. As you can see, there's some oil in there. And we're going to definitely have to come back and reassess this because, for the most part, ideally you don't want to <laughs> see no oil in your, in your coolant. Not going to not gonna go to the worst case scenario here but you know uh, it's quite alarming everything went good with changing the oil coolant everything I set out to do I did perfect no problem well you know, remember that part where I was showing you guys you know the oil and the coolant some sometimes I, I wonder why I am the way I am I just want to put that. I wonder why I am the way I am. So I had uh, some oil buckets or some oil containers ready to go. Um, and as you, those who are familiar with this, you're probably already there ahead of me. I didn't clean that pan pre before using it. I didn't clean it out. And therefore, it was used for coolant. So, number one, if you didn't clean out a previously used pan that was used for oil, there's going to be oil residue in it. That's common sense. That's easy. That's, well, if then you use it for coolant, then you're like, obviously going to see that oil uh, in the coolant. So, uh, another, just, just common sense stuff, obviously. So, when I use that pan and I pour the coolant or I drain the coolant in the in that pan uh, there was there was coolant float there was oil floating in the coolant so after I was done drained it after I was done draining it and stuff and I looked down and there was like I'm I'm the first thing I'm thinking is my mind went back to when my temps would go up a little bit and I was just still trying to figure out why and then um, if the compression test that I originally had um, taken, or yeah, the compression test that I originally had taken, did that is that now starting to um, fail in a sense? Like, is my engine like having head gasket problems? Like, so I'm thinking about all these these things. Like I said, I like I, I literally said in the video that I wouldn't go there uh, in one part and. <laughs> I literally went there in my mind. I started freaking out. And so I talked to um, someone who's been a great help with everything, Mauricio, shout out. Went back to noob level, very basic, very basic, very basic. The thing that I'm pretty sure someone doing the oil change for the first time would know, or doing a coolant change for, or coolant flush for the first time would know what to do. When using a container, make sure it's clean. Because if you don't make sure it's, if you're not making sure it's clean, then you're gonna be, you're gonna have these stupid scenarios, these dump scenarios, and then you start overthinking. Okay, what's up, guys? Um, I wanted to, I kind of already ended the video, but uh, I totally forgot to do uh, two things. Uh, I'm gonna place my sense, my temp sensors, and then also I'm gonna replace, um, or not replace, but. Uh, cut part of that pipe off um, of the EGR and then use a socket wrench to take the remaining portion of it off because I can't do it with a, just a wrench and um, so as far as the temp sensors let me show you all what that looks like um, this coolant temp this this sensor is the OEM coolant temp sensor that that supplies uh, information to the uh, ECU and cold starts and stuff like that uh, it's located uh, on the on the on the front water pipe, hard water pipe, um, and also this one is too. This one sends um, information, or you know, it lets you know on your cluster your uh, what what you're seeing uh, as far as your temperature. So this one's to your ECU, and this one's to your your gauge cluster. So I'm just gonna replace both of these just to be safe. When I was trying to figure out if my car was, when it was overheating at a certain moments. So uh, I felt to do that and I'm gonna do that now. And then maybe I can cut this pipe off as well. Maybe I can cut this 
EGR uh, stuff off as well. So if I have no time, it's getting dark pretty fast, but it shouldn't take too long. So jump right into it. Okay, gonna go ahead and remove these two and then add these two. I already got my socket wrenches. So this one goes with this one. And this is a, a 13 16. This is a 14. So let's get this going. And you got both of these off, you just literally just pull them, pull them both off, and I'm gonna unscrew them. Okay. Seems to be coming off. That's pretty bad. Wow. The cluster gauge one. Oh, my phone's about to fall. Okay. Okay. Got one of the two sensors um, on that I need to replace. Sounded like a simple task before it got dark outside. It didn't happen. Why? Because the sensor that um, goes, connects to the cluster was on super tight. And I couldn't find the socket I needed. Right now, I have to wait till tomorrow. I had one job. Super easy and simple, couldn't get it done. So I'm a little flustered. As far as cutting the EGR pipe, did get to that also. I don't know what to do with these half finished vlogs. I don't know what to do with them. But anyways, this is your outro and I hope you have a rest. And I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Peace.